So that's uh, the way to do it in TP here. I take the shot cycler, I put it into a point 0.3 because the UV uh, the UVW uh, actually vector, uh, you know, UV UVW is X Y Z the same thing. So I pipe the shot cycler into the X value. So now I have a vector which uh, whose X value is this sweep along the UVs and the text map color node I use to get the um, you know the texture and look it up look uh, look up the color here at the end at these UVs and then I take the color at the end and if I want to like take a component of the color I should use, I'm using a color node and in this color node I can get you know the green and the red stuff um, as a component and I have the green and the red uh, separately that I'm going to explain to you in a second why but I just offset it uh, because uh, here you know if I don't offset it at all I'm gonna have values between 0 and uh, you know 1 the max range or like 1 or 1.127 or whatever and I, it's just gonna offset in one direction so it's only gonna be on this side and I offset it, I, I offset it so it gets on both sides of the line so that's why I offset it and then um, the the amplitude thing comes in and what the amplitude thing is that is that if you look at my painting here what is going to happen if I just offset them is that they're going to be simply offset you know along the entire course of the thing but I want uh, to have no offset at 0 and 1 and I want to have maximum offset at 0.5 and the way I did this actually was with an expression, but you can also do it with a map. You can do it with a value uh, to time. You know, you can say for my for my values between um, zero and one, uh, have something like um, you have you need to have your maximum at 0.5. So do something like this. So you can you can paint you know this gra gradient um, this kind of a map with the value of time but what I did was uh, I had I just wrote an expression I just imagine you know how it should happen so the expression came up it's quite simple um, the expression is this guy 0.5 minus the absolute of uh, you know the value minus 0.5 and you know this also looks more complicated than it is if you just uh, imagine how things are gonna work out you can you can find it I can also maybe talk about this kind of thinking in you know, another video but you know, for now I just want to explain. Anyway, the easiest way would be to just map it with the value of time. So in this max in the middle thing, I used to define the amplitude. So this guy is gonna transform the values uh, from in the sh of, of the shot cycler from zero to one range to uh, this thing. It's gonna be like from zero, then one is gonna be at 0.5, and then uh, it's gonna go to zero again at one. So this thing multiplied by the max amplitude, this is multiplied, is then multiplied uh, with my value of the color to get the the final offset thing. And that's the value of the offset. So the direction of the offset is a bit more interesting thing. Um, let's see here. So the direction of the offset, I'm just gonna delete everything and start new. So uh, the direction of the offset is calculated in the following way. Again, you have the source and the target. So the question was how to get this vector, you know, uh, that I that I should displace on. And uh, displacement itself, it's easy. You just you know add a vector to another vector. So I have the position vector of this particle. If I just add another vector, it's just going to be you know placed here, and that's going to give me an offset. But the question was how to get these, um, you know, perpendicular vector. So, if you look at the perpendicular vectors to this line at this point here, for example, you see that they are many. This guy is perpendicular. Actually, there is like a whole plane here, which is perpendicular to the to this vector at this point. And each of the vectors that have, you know, that start from here and lie in the same plane is going to be perpendicular. So there's going to be many, you know, perpendicular vectors. And to um, to choose one of these guys, uh, I choose to use the vector cross product 
And the cool thing about the cross, cross product is that it gives you a perpendicular vector as an output, but you, and you need to give it two vectors as inputs. So you see that here I have just one vector input that is my you know the the this array kind of this direction, and to for uh, to have the to choose the perpendicular vector, I need to, to get one more uh, vector and I choose it to be actually the camera Z direction, and I think this is usually called up vector uh, for all these things that use the vector cross product to define you know, to get such perpendicular vectors. So um, using the camera Z direction as an up vector is going to result in practically um, projecting all my stuff. You know, this offset is going to be projected on the camera plane, which is, I think, actually quite useful. Anyway, so I get this cross product, uh, which gives me this uh, vector, you know, this perpendicular vector, and I just add here that vector to um, actually I multiplied somewhere okay here I multiplied here you know this vector by the the magnitude that I have and then I add it to the position that I have so far so uh, I have the, both the magnitude of the offset vector uh, the magnitude of the offset vector, which like here, for example, the whole thing goes like this, uh, actually goes like this. So I have the magnitude here at this point, and I have you know the direction. So this is what the all this a multiplier is giving me, and then I just uh, add here, which is um, this add is just placing that vector at this point. You know this vector at this point. Yeah, again, sorry for a crappy drawing. So um, you see that at the, but you see that. Let's just connect so far. Ooh, see what's going to happen. So. Um, yeah, I'm gonna just put a bit more density in. It's more visible. Make it a bit bigger. So 